In the previous lectures, we have seen classful addressing, and today we will see classless addressing part one. What we are going to deal in part one? Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to outcome number one. We will know the drawbacks of classful addressing, and outcome number two. We will understand the need for classless addressing. Let's start with what is classful addressing. In classful IPv4 addressing, we have five classes of IPv4 addresses: class A, B, C, D, and E. And class A, B, C are used for our general purpose. Suppose if we want to create a network with 200 devices, then we can obviously go for class C. Any class C network can cater up to 254 hosts. In case if our requirement is 300. So we can't go for class C because in class C the maximum number of hosts or devices possible is 254 only. In order to handle 300 devices, we need to go to class B. So in class B, we can have a maximum of 65,534 hosts possible per network. In case if our requirement is just 300, no other way we need to go for class B. But class B wastes a lot of IP addresses. In the example we have taken, we need to create a network that uses 300 devices or that contains 300 devices. So obviously we can't go for class C, so we need to go to class B. But if we note in class B, it can have a maximum of 65,534 hosts or devices or IP addresses, but our requirement is just 300. So 65,534 minus 300. Is sixty five thousand two hundred and thirty four IP addresses we are going to waste. That's a huge set of IP addresses we are wasting, and that's the main drawback of classful addressing. In case if we want to have a network which needs eighty thousand IP addresses, so obviously we cannot use class B. So we need to go to class A, where class A is a big number of network where it can cater one crore sixty seven lakh seventy seven thousand. 214 hosts possible per network. So classful addressing obviously wastes IP addresses. Say if I want to create a network that needs only five devices, I need to obviously go for class C because in a classful world, class C has this many networks wherein in each network we can have 254 hosts, but our requirement is just five. So obviously we are going to waste 249 IP addresses. Let's now analyze the drawbacks of classful addressing. Basically, classful addressing has the lack of internal address flexibility. Big organizations are assigned large monolithic blocks of addresses that don't match well the structure of the underlying internal network. So, if we have a big organization, since big organization needs either class B or class C, so these block of addresses that do not exactly match the underlying internal network. And the second drawback is inefficient use of address space. We know there are five classes of IPv4 addresses, and we have only three classes that are used for our general purpose. So the existence of three block sizes, maybe class A, B, and C, leads to waste of limited IP address space. We already seen this in the previous slide. Classful addressing wastes IP addresses. And also the third drawback is proliferation of routing table entries. We know a switch is going to store the MAC address table, whereas a router is going to store the routing table. Routing tables are really needed in order to take a decision to forward the packets. As the internet grows, more and more entries are required for routers to handle the routing of IP datagrams, which causes performance problems for routers. Attempting to reduce inefficient address space allocation leads to even more routing table entries. If we take a router, that router is also going to have some memory, and this memory is going to store the routing table. In a routing table, the IP addresses are going to be stored. What happens if the routing table is a very big one and it's getting increased periodically? Router also has a limited memory size, right? It can't handle all IP addresses in the routing table. So when we go for classful addressing, we have this drawback too. So basically, the drawbacks of classful addressing include lack of internal address flexibility. inefficient use of address space and the proliferation of router table entries or routing table entries and because of these problems we need to migrate from classful addressing to classless addressing in a nutshell classful addressing wastes ip addresses so we need to sparingly use the ip addresses but with classful addressing that is with the fixed subnet mask it's not possible to save the ip addresses 
So that's why we are migrating towards classless addressing. In classless addressing, we are going to use the IP address space sparingly and based on the need as well. Suppose if we are going to create a network which is going to have only 25 computers, we can create our own subnet mask and we can create our own network by sparingly use the IP addresses. So sparing usage of IP address is not possible in classful addressing, whereas it is made possible in classless addressing. Classless addressing also wastes some IP addresses, but not that much when compared to classful addressing. And that's it guys. I hope now you know the drawbacks of classful addressing and we understood the need for classless addressing. I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture and thank you for watching.